Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to The Greg McAfee Show, where we discuss steps to successful entrepreneurship, how to take your business to new heights, and ultimately follow your dreams. So I've not been on the air for the last seven weeks or so. Um, I hope you've missed me. I've missed doing this, that's for sure. But that's what we're going to talk about today is what happened to me um, approximately seven, seven and a half weeks ago. So on November 14th, 15th, somewhere in there, um, basically I started having some chest pressure on the right side of my chest. Um, You know, I run a business, um, I have a lot of responsibilities. Um, On top of that, unfortunately, I've had some uh, parent illnesses. Um, My dad, um, major signs, I don't wanna say first signs, major signs of dementia. Um, He loses his balance a lot, falls. My stepmom calls me 20 times a day Um, she's also got some health issues and, uh, different, different issues, but, um, it makes it pretty tough. So I started having these chest pressure pains. I Google it. It says, um, if it's stress and you relax, you know, for a few five, 10 minutes, it will go away. And that's exactly what I did. I I would feel this pressure coming on. I would sit down for a little while and try to chill and they would go away. So I thought it's gotta be stress. I mean, I've never had it before like this and with my parents' issues, it's gotta be stress. So, um, and and just so you know, I mean, uh, probably, um, you know, two to three weeks prior to that, I started doing some, the elliptical machine, cardio, Um, you know, I could do 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I had to do some rehab for uh, uh, an older injury and I I was doing 30 minutes on their bicycle. Um, No problem. I mean, I'm I'm out of shape as far as um, my weight goes and stuff like that, but I I had no problem doing that. So again, uh, another reason why I, I didn't think it was anything serious. So on November, uh, so this happens from uh, day in, day out, no certain times, a couple times a day, I'd get that pressure. And um, again, I would relax for a little bit and it would dissipate. So um, on November 20th, Saturday morning, the Saturday before Thanksgiving, I was up early. I had some things to do at my office and um, I was up early and I was supposed to meet someone. So long story short, I I swept out my garage, basically leaves that had blown in. That's all. And I started sweeping and boy, it really hit me hard. I started having really, really heavy pressure. At that time, for the first time, I really became concerned. And uh, because I wasn't thinking about my parents at the time, I wasn't thinking about the um, anything at the office. I had I basically had no worries. It's early Saturday morning. I love Saturday mornings, and I was just looking forward to getting a cup of coffee and and going into the office for a little bit. So, my truck was there. I got up in my truck, sat there, probably ten minutes, and it it dissipated a little bit, but it didn't go away all the way. So, um, um, I drove I drove to the office. Um, and, uh, you know, it finally went, you know, probably 50 to 70%, it dissipated. And, um, so I got to my desk and I'm sitting at my desk and as I lifted my arms to start typing, they just felt really heavy, started getting chest pains again. And I I said, I'm done with this. I drove to the emergency room admitted myself and um they did a uh now this is very important um for guys out there you know probably between the age i I lost a really really good friend uh and competitor and yes you can have both 
at the same uh, same person. Um, his name was Ed, and he was 40 years old. He had run a triathlon six months before this incident. We were at a seminar together in Columbus, Ohio. It's about an hour away from where I uh, live and work. And um, we sat together. We talked. I mean, we just had a lot in common. We started our companies from scratch. We were 30 to 45 minutes away from each other. We did compete a little bit, but not that much. Um, and we just had a lot in common. I mean, he's a type. he was a type of guy that I could call him or he could call me and I could say, you know, hey, is your phone ringing over there? Because we haven't had a phone ring, you know, in several hours. You know, and you, you have to appreciate that if you're in Ohio, Ohio weather, a nice 65, 70 degrees, sometimes your phone um, does not ring, especially if you're a smaller company. Okay, so Ed drove home from the seminar, started having chest pains, stopped by the fire station where he had a lot of friends. He did, I think he was a um, part-time auxiliary fireman uh, at one time. But anyway, he stopped in there. They did an EKG on him real quick, and they said, you know, you're fine, but you really need to go to the hospital. And, uh, or the EKG checked out okay, and, and, and you need to go to the hospital. Um, so he went home, did a few things. His, um, his wife drove him to the hospital. They got there, and the, the emergency room was just packed. And he's like, I don't have time for this. I'll just go tomorrow. Um Unfortunately, three hours later, he was laying on the couch and he literally fell off the couch and he was gone. 40 years old. Ran a triathlon six months prior to that. Um, his widow maker was 99% blocked. Okay, so I got that in the back of my mind. And I actually wrote an article about Ed and if you're on my Facebook Iron Sharpens Iron page, it's Iron Sharpens Iron Business Roundtable. Feel free to join. And uh, if you own a small business, I'll let you in, regardless of what small business it is. But I used to interview um, heating and air conditioning companies and small, you know, uh, friends or acquaintances, and I would just interview them to see how they started, and you know, and just it would make a nice little article for the local uh, association paper. I had just interviewed Ed two weeks before he died. It was one of the hardest things I ever did was I put all my notes together and I wrote an, um, you know, a page and a half article about him. And um, his brother was his right-hand man in the business and um, he wanted me to read it. Um, at I believe he asked me to read it at his viewing, and I read it. It was tough. It was tough. I bawled. I really did. I cried the whole time I was writing it. And um, but I posted. I just recently posted it about a week ago on the Iron Sharpens Iron page, you know, so guys could read it. Um, it's really a, it was a neat article. Ed was a neat guy. Um, so I'm at the hospital, and they did an EKG. It was fine. They did a heart. They did a heart scan. It was fine. They did an echocardiogram. It was fine. So here's here's uh, uh, some very important info. Don't stop there. Okay. When they did a blood enzyme test, um, they found out my enzymes were elevated. They were supposed to be somewhere around twenty two, and and mine was up around forty or forty two and slowly climbing. That means I was in the first stages of a heart attack. Basically what that means. And I was like, you know, I was like, I was shocked, really. I, I thought it was just stress. So at that point, I thought, well, I probably need a few stents, you know, who knows. So the next step was, they said, they, they said, Greg, we could probably give you a stress test, but you'd probably pass it. Because I told him, I said, I can do 30, 40 minutes on the elliptical, no problem. And uh, so they said, we're just going to jump to the heart cath, um, and you're, you're going to get a heart cath. And uh, this was over a two- or three-day period while I was in the hospital. They took me from the hospital down to another hospital, 
Um, we have a Miami Valley South, Miami Valley North. Miami Valley North is the main office, main branch, main hospital. So they took me to the north, and I stayed there, um, and they just gave me basically medicine to slow down my heart rate, slow down my blood pressure, so I wouldn't have a heart attack. So I go into this heart cath, and wouldn't you know it, um, the cardiologist who's doing the heart cath is a customer of mine. Um, and the funny thing is, I installed a system for him back in the 90s, me personally with a helper. So we're talking about that, and he remembers all this stuff and everything, and um, he's talking away, and all of a sudden, you know, they hook me, they go through all the things, they, they the heart cath comes into your arm, goes up your arm, goes over to your heart, and it can show you all the vessels um, and arteries that are blocked. So they've got me all hooked up to that, and all the all of a sudden I hear him say, well, this is going to be a surgical fix. And all I could say, I go, really? And he goes, yeah, I'm going to show you here in a minute. So I'm laying on this table, and he slides this big monitor over on top of me. And he said, you see this? You see this artery up here? It's probably this big. He said, you see this artery? It comes down into your heart, and it gets smaller and smaller. He goes, that's your widow maker, and it's 99% blocked. You got my attention. He said, you see this other artery over here? He said, that's your right coronary artery, another main artery. It's 99% blocked kidding me. You see this our other artery? It's 90% blocked. You see this other artery? It's 90% blocked. You see this one down here? It's 85% blocked. So basically, you've got five that are blocked. You need a quintuple bypass. Stents are not an option, folks. Okay, it's not a stent thing. This is major. Cut open chest, pry it open, take heart out, Add, add bypass vessels, which they take out of my arm from here, from elbow down, out of my legs from the knee down, and two more out of my chest that they use for the bypass. Uh, he says, I, I might be able to, it was, it was probably, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. He goes, we might be able to do this tonight. He said, I've got a good friend that um, might be able to do it for you tonight. He's one of the best. And he said, matter of fact, I'm going to run down and talk to him. And he ran right down. The, guy, the, the doctor who did my, my heart surgery was in surgery. And this other doctor went into the, the surgery room and said, hey, can you do another one tonight? I've got a friend who needs a quintuple. And the doctor said, this one's going a little bit long. Um, you know, if it was a double bypass, I might try it. But he said a quintuple. Um, how about if we do it first thing in the morning? You know, whatever it was, 6.30, 7 a.m. So, um, you know, they bring my wife in and my wife's thinking stents. And they bring her in and they show her the widow maker. Um, I mean, that's an eye opener right there. Um, now. The doctor said, Dr. Shrek, um, which is the one who did the um, heart cath, he said, Greg, do you want to know why you're alive? <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah. He pointed to the screen, and my wife was standing here, and he pointed to the screen, and he said, you see this, this vessel here at the bottom, and this vessel at the bottom, and this vessel, three vessels. I said, yes, sir. He said, you did not have those at birth. Hmm. I said, I didn't. He said, no. He said, those vessels formed on their own. And I, and I call them the God bypass, the GBP, the God bypass, because they were, fo they formed as a bypass to compensate for all the blockages at the top of my heart. So they were bringing blood down from a couple other arteries and into the bottom of my heart. And he said, that's the only reason you're alive today. 
because he said most people have a heart attack and die if they don't catch it um, with all the blockages you have. So again, I mean, for me, I, you know, I said, praise God. Thank you, God. And, uh, we went into the, we went into the surgery the next day. It was about a four hour surgery. They were able to do the whole five bypasses. Cause he told me up front, he said, look, sometimes we can't get them all, but if we get two, you'll, you, you should have a long life. But he goes, I'm going to try for all five. And they got all five. And, and, and I'm very thankful. Very thankful for that. Um, to me, God put Dr. Shrek there. Dr. Shrek has a contact with one of the best heart surgeons in the area. He goes down and talks to him. They set it up. And he gets it set up for the next morning. If you don't believe in God, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know how else to describe. There's no, no coincidence about this. Um, it's a God thing. So, uh, I have my heart surgery the day before Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you for the first, first three to four days, it was pretty tough. Um, you just really lay there. You've got all these tubes, you got tubes coming out of your stomach for all the, the drainage tubes and, and all this stuff. And you're on oxygen and, and, um, you know, you can't get up, you can't even get off your back. Um, you have no desire to read or watch TV. You have no desire to do anything, but just lay there and um, take pain meds. That's basically it. Um, you know, just, just a very serious, very serious surgery. You know, thank God we live in, you know, um, a time where they're able to do what they do because, you know, even... 20 to 30 years ago, uh, they did bypasses because that actually, they, they actually said your, your, um, the reason you have this is probably about 80% heredity. And my dad had a triple bypass back in, um, when he was about my age and we're only 20 years apart. So 20, um, 20 years ago, my dad, 20 to 22 years ago, my dad had a triple bypass. So, um, you know, so I'm telling my kids, um, just beware. Um, so it's, uh, they said it was, they said it was going to take five to six days to recover. And I actually, I set a goal. I did know I did. I was able to do that rather. And I set a goal and I said, I'm going to accomplish They had They had me doing all these things. You got to, you know, blow in this thing and get a certain pressure and, um, you know, um, pull in this pipe to raise this bar, all this kind of stuff. They said, here's where you need to be. So my goal was, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there fast. And you've, you've got to walk and you've got to do other things um, that before you can leave the hospital. So I've set goals. I'm going to do that by tomorrow. I'm going to have this done by tomorrow. I'm going to have this done by the next day. I'm going to do this and I'm going to walk and we're going to walk all the way around the hospital by the, you know, fourth day and I'm out of here. And that's exactly what happened. So, um, after my surgery, um, on a Wednesday, I, I left Sunday and, uh, left the hospital Sunday. And it was, um, you know, I wasn't allowed, I was not allowed to drive. I wasn't even allowed to wear a seatbelt. They didn't want any pressure on my chest. Uh, it'll be seven weeks um, in two days that I had my surgery. Um, I've been back to work for somewhere between seven and ten working days. Um, I started off part as soon as I could drive. I started off. I got back to work, and and I'll tell you why. Because a lot of times I've had minor surgeries where my wife brings me into work, but I'm gonna tell you why she couldn't do that here in a minute. So I'm uh, driving to work and I, I just worked a couple, I worked a couple four day, four day, uh, I'm sorry, we, we have a four day work week. I worked a couple four hour days and then I went home extremely tired, just wears you down. Uh, and then, you know, after, after about four or five days of working, I got a really kick of energy 
and uh, just a lot of motivation. And I was just coming in here, man, I was, I was 100 mile an hour. And, you know, probably has to do with uh, better blood flow all the way around because now I've got five arteries that were almost blocked um, and they're open again. So, um, but I, I do have a lot of energy. Matter of fact, I started uh, 12 hours ago and I'm still here. And uh, some people will say, take it easy now. <laughs> you know, all I do is sit at a desk, right? Um, so anyway, I, uh, I'm at home, I'm recovering and uh, my wife, um, you know, her entire life, she wanted to be a stay-home mom. I mean, that's what she always wanted to be. And we were blessed. Um, she worked, when we first got married, she worked a little bit, but we started the business the same year. So after about a year, um, um, actually, she worked longer than that. Uh, um, a few years later, um, when we were expecting um, our, our first child, Travis, um, she, um, was able to quit her job and stay home. And she's been able to stay home the whole time. Now, at first she did work, she worked in the business for, for some times, you know, even after Travis was born, brought him to work with her, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, at first we were working out of a garage. So all she had to do is walk to the garage. So my wife was really looking forward some of you won't understand this and that's okay, but my wife was really looking forward to taking care of me during this time of recovery. <clears throat> Six days into the recovery, my wife tested positive for COVID. Well, I didn't, I've, I've never had COVID, so I didn't want to get COVID. So she quarantines herself in a bedroom, but Everyone listening to this in the heating and air conditioning industry knows that your ductwork flows throughout your entire house. So if it is a virus and it can flow through the air, um, I came down with COVID and my daughter came down with COVID. And we didn't tell my wife because my wife got a really serious case of, ended up getting a very serious case of COVID pneumonia. And folks, I don't know anything about this other than the Chinese started it. But there's a big difference between COVID and COVID pneumonia. So my wife ended up being in the hospital for 19 days. She was on 100% oxygen, high flow oxygen. Um, and um, we have a friend of ours who is a doctor and she checked on her on a regular basis and um, she didn't tell us this when it was happening, but she told us this later that Naomi had um, black circles forming around her eyes and she basically said that's that's kind of that's some of the last steps um, of COVID pneumonia before death. So, that's how close Naomi was to death. And uh, I, I was afraid I was going to lose her. And we had her on every prayer chain um, that I knew of. And I had I asked everyone to put, a, put her on prayer chain. And she gradually pulled out of it. She's been home now for approximately um, 10 days. And... She's still on oxygen, but very little now. It's down to less than 2%. So hopefully within the next week, she's completely weaned off oxygen. She's gaining back her strength. It's a very traumatic experience. It's a, it's a close to death experience, basically. I mean, here I just had a quintuple bypass. My wife goes into the hospital. My daughter's 18, just turned 18. Uh, She's doing all she can to help me, you know, at home because I, I, you know, it's just something, it's just an experience. I can't, you know, I, it's just, you're just down and I'm not used to being down. It's very hard for me. And so anyway, it just really got bad. And again, the power of prayer kicked in and my wife said something to me in the hospital when she was at an all time low. And she said, I just want a second chance to life like you got. And that's what we were praying for, and and uh, God answered prayer, and and we're very thankful for that. 
never take it for granted. Got a second chance to life, both of us. Um, she was never put on the ventilator, but she was one step away from the ventilator. And that 100% oxygen, she was able to maintain about um, you know 90 to 92% oxygen while she was on 100%. And then that slowly started weaning down. So anyway, it's um, uh, I fortunately my COVID experience was a dry cough and a headache, and that's all I ever had. And uh, so again, we're we're blessed. Um, I, I do want to tell you though that from any from everything in life, and I write a lot about this. Is I I just set goals. I just a lot of prayer first, but I set goals and I had a goal to get, get, you know, get back to work. Our, the first goal was to be able to go see my wife because I really couldn't walk good. Um, I dropped about 30 pounds throughout the whole process. Not a bad thing, especially for me. Uh, but I was just weak, very weak, but I set goals and, uh, I'm doing a, uh, um, with both my kids, Travis and Tiffany, I'm going through the Think and Grow Rich, the legacy movie. Um, if you, man, if you want to invest in something, invest in that. Um, that that's a life changer right there. But it's based on uh, Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And basically, Napoleon Hill did interviewed several, several hundred successful people, um, which were mostly millionaires, very successful. Um, and it was based on, uh, rich it was based on financial, emotional, and spiritual. And, um, uh, you know, basically you, the book is all about you, you want a different, you think different, you're going to get a different life. You know, it's all in how you think. Think better, think positive. It's not all about positive. It's just think better. Change your thinking, change your life. That's basically what it's all about. If you don't set it, you don't get it. Okay? If you don't set a goal, nothing's going to happen. So I'm just a firm believer in setting goals. I, I share with you my experience. I want to leave you with something here that uh, the cardiologist told me. And he told me to tell all my friends. And that's what I mean, somewhere between 40, 40 and up. Uh, and it's good if you're 30, you need to know this. Because when you turn when you turn 35 or 40, you need to go have this done. Um, it's called a heart calcium test. It's about $99 right now. You can go get a heart, you schedule it, you go get a heart calcium test. And a heart calcium test will show also show how much calcium is in your heart, but it'll show how many block, all your blockages in your arteries and vessels around your heart. So it's the best 99 bucks you'll ever invest. I wish I would have done it 10 years ago when, when they started blocking, um, you know, things could have been uh, different. Then I might've been able to make some changes. Um, and my cholesterol, by the way, was high eight years ago. And I got it down strictly by diet. And I got it down to a, a very good level. And I kept it at that level for several years. Um, I, the only prescriptions I were I was on a lot, a very light blood pressure pill, and a very light water pill, um, and that's it. That's all I was on. Um, so I did. I've been very fortunate with my health up until right now. Um, so again, you've got to have a burning desire to make a change. You've got to have a burning desire to do anything different. If you want, you know, if you're if you're going to change your business, you've got to have a burning desire to do so, to make an improvement, to do something no one else is doing, to become number one, whatever it might be. You've got to have that burning desire. I mean, it's got to burn in you, and it's got to be something that you you think about. So when you're setting a goal, sometimes it it sometimes you, you can't set too large of a goal. Now somebody will, somebody's bound to argue with me on that. You've got to set your goals high, but too high, you'll never hit it. Okay, um, too low, 
that's uh, you know, I mean, that's that's just basically being lazy. So you've got to hit it high enough to where you got to stretch. You and your team have to stretch to hit it, and you you have to have that desire when you set a goal. At, uh, immediately, you've got to think positive and say, "I'm going to hit this goal." But sometimes, you know, reality sets in, and, and you go, I, "I just don't know if we can do this." And um, when that happens, basically, then when that negative negativity comes into your life, when that happens, what what I want to challenge you to do is reread the goal several times and every day, and then verbally, out loud, read the goal. You get in your office early or you're there late, read over those goals out loud. I want to accomplish this. I want to do this. And that negativity will go away and you'll get that fire back, that burning desire to hit that goal. So give it a shot. So before we wrap up, if you're watching um, on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. You can all you can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your preferred listening platform. Keep listening because I always have something good to say, right? No, I always have something positive to say. And I want to help you grow your business. And... Um, I want to help you sleep better at night. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Uh, Be sure to tune in next week when we will. um, uh, There's another book um, that that I think I said six to seven weeks ago. I talked about this book, and uh, we're going to talk about it. But I'm also going to really dive into the um, Think and Grow Rich book. And um, we're going to talk about that for probably several weeks, um, unless God lays something else on my heart to talk about. Um, Thanks for listening. And as always, carry on and have a great day.